Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And today, I have a very fun class planned for us. I love doing portraiture, and I cannot wait to show you this process. So that is exactly what we are working on today, a portrait in pastels. Uh, now, if you are interested in any of the materials that I'm using today, make sure you go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and in the search bar, uh, at the top, type in today's class code, which is JL259, 259. So that'll bring up the teacher's cart and everything that I'm using should be in there as well. So you can check it out that way. So as you can see, I have a portrait set up. Uh, now, because I'm gonna be working in pastels, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about real quick. Um, my easel, this is on an easel, which is not the normal setup for us to do these shows here, but I wanted to make sure to show this because I have my paper attached to my drawing board, but that's on my easel, and my easel is tilted slightly forward. The reason why is because I want the pastel dust that's going to fall down to fall down onto the lip of my easel here. Um, it's just going to kind of help me not get a bunch of pastel dust onto my paper while, as I'm working, and just the the edge of my um, easel here where the, the drawing board is being held. Super easy to clean it up. I usually just take a little handheld vacuum and go wee, and then just it cleans up so easy. So uh, that's why you're seeing it on a drawing board here. Uh, but what I have done so far is I have a portrait here. This is Lloyd. He has such a good face for a portrait. I just love this picture. So, so good. Uh, but this is a coworker's uh, granddad, so I decided to, to draw a picture for him. And uh, I'm going to be working in pastel, so I have a toned paper. You don't have to work on toned paper, you can work on pure white, uh, but the, the toned paper I think is a little bit more fun. So I actually am using the Fabriano, uh, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Tiziano? <laughs> I feel like that's correct, Fabriano Tiziano. Makes sense, right? Um, but this is the pochette uh, color drawing paper. Uh, you can use all kinds of media on this. I mean, all types of media is listed here in the back. Uh, but it's a pack of 12. And if I pull them out here. You can get, I can spread them out a little bit, all kinds of colors, including the one I have up here and including the one I've already done a full portrait on, right? So this is the end game of what we're trying to go for. But um, as you can see, I used the really, really light lavender kind of color for this one. And for this one, I'm gonna be using more of that like kind of plum color. It's a little deeper, it's a little darker, so it's going to have a different feel from the other one that I finished. Um, but that's what the colored papers will do for you. So if I have this pulled up, right, you can see the paper color is going to sparkle through here and there, unless you really, really lay down your pastels quite heavy handed. Um, that's what I love about the colored paper is that it just adds a little bit of like unexpected color that works really well and adds a little something extra. But I figured this color, the, the lavender, and then this color of like a, the purples, I feel like those would work really well for a pastel, but you are not at all contained to those colors. Uh, I've worked on magenta paper. I've worked on the bright blue before. All of them are so fun and they all give a just slightly different feel to your end portrait. Uh, now that's the paper I'm using. Now, the big thing is that I figured since we're doing a, pa a portrait, I could very easily, let me grab this out of the way here. Uh, very easily I could grab a huge set of pastels uh, that have all kinds of various skin tones in there, as well as other fun colors. Um, but not everyone has the ability to get a giant pack of pastels. So I figured I would show you how to get to a, the end result of a portrait using very limited color. So if we go to that overhead view here, I will show you the packs that I'm gonna be using. So these are the semi-hard pastel, and then I have the soft pastel. And as you can see, they're only the set of 12, and they are the basic colors. Uh, this is exactly what I used to create this portrait. I did not use any other colors besides what you see here. 
Now I use both of these because, and I'm gonna explain that a little bit later, uh, but those two packs, they have very similar colors across the board from one to the other. They're slightly different, uh, like the, these two right here, the kind of peachy tones are the ones that you can really see a big difference on. Uh, but for the most part, they're pretty much identical. And none of those, especially from like here down, is something that you would consider like a skin tone. Now up here you get a little closer, and we are definitely going to be using those colors, but that's exactly what I used to create this entire portrait, right? So if you really look, you can see all the different colors and everything. And we will lay down the colors as well, uh, just to kind of show you how to get to that stage uh, on a portrait. So before I jump in and officially start, do we have any like questions so far? All right. If you guys do have questions though, pop them in the chat. Amanda, my amazing moderator, Amanda and Frida are in the chats for you guys and they're gonna ask me the questions uh, that you have. So let's, uh, let's get started. So like I said, I have the soft pastels and I have the semi hard pastels. When I start a portrait like this, I don't always start with a sketch. The reason why I have a sketch on here is specifically because we are restricted on time during this show uh, and I wanna work as fast as possible. So I already laid down kind of a map of where everything is going. Uh, do you have to use orange to do so? No. I've seen, uh, or I've used uh, pure white before, I've used black, I've used blue, I mean, all different colors to just lay down a sketch. Uh, the one thing I will say is that it does help whatever color you start with is a color that kind of you can see in this the, the picture that you're trying to draw. Um, now, I will be using the orange in his skin tones as well, so I'm not mad if that affects the color that I lay down. So let's grab a couple colors here. So when it comes to pastels, the rule of thumb that I've heard several times before is that you should work like you do with oils uh, from dark to lights. Uh, it's easier to lighten a dark value than it is to darken a lighter value. Uh, you tend to get a little bit muddier if you try to go the other way and start, start putting darker colors onto your lighter values. Um, now, that being said, we are artists. We are here to break all of the rules. <laughs> so I've worked both ways. It is possible. And if you need to darken a lighter value because it's wrong, you can get there. Uh, it's just easier to go the other direction. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have my, my reference here, we have a question. Did you say if your sketch was done in the hard or the soft pastel? Uh, it's in the semi-hard. And the reason why, and I'm glad you asked because I just went on a tangent and totally forgot to answer this. Uh, the reason why I start with my semi-hard pastels is because they're a little harder um, they don't lay down as much color when I first start. So this is where I like to start. You don't have to start with this. You don't have to have both of these. You could do the entire portrait in soft pastels, but soft pastels are gonna lay down color a lot softer because they, they are a softer uh, kind of, I guess kind of firmness to the pastel. So it, it tends to lay down a lot heavier handed than it does with the semi-hard. So when I'm first starting off, I usually go for a harder, firmer pastel, like a semi-hard pastel. Again, you don't have to, but that's just me and kind of how I kind of ease my way into a portrait. Uh, so with this, you can see in my uh, portrait, and one thing when I do uh, portraiture, I look for distinctive lights and shadows. So this side of his face is in shadow, while this side of his face is in light. When I look at that is, um, I try to remind myself that shadows in naturalistic light usually are cool and your uh, kind of lighted areas are warm. Now, the best way to think about it is your light is kind of yellow, so stick to the like yellows and oranges and like the warmer tones here. And then your purples and greens and your blues, the cooler colors are gonna go in the shadows. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna start with this fun blue. And I'm just gonna kind of block in kind of the side of his face that is in shadow. 
Now while I do that, I'm also going to try not to lose my drawing <laughs> as much as possible. Now uh, I have the ability to uh, fix my drawing at this point if I need to. I can adjust it if I need to. You know, it's not a big deal if I if I kind of lose my drawing a little bit and then I can get it back. Uh, but as I'm drawing, and I'm going to actually start kind of standing back a little bit. As I'm drawing, I am constantly looking from here to here to here to here, and I'm my eyes are bouncing back and forth comparing what I'm doing to what is there. Now when I say that, I mean like big shapes. Like you see this big chunk of blue that I laid down? That's the big chunk of shadow that's on his forehead, right? So that's what I mean by kind of, I'm constantly bouncing back and forth and I'm trying to just basic kind of concepts of where my lights and my shadows are. Now his hair over here is also in shadow, but the top of his hair right here is in light. So I'm not going to put the whole thing in shadow, but as you can see with pastels, you mix on the paper. That orange is now mixing with my blue and I'm not mad about it. I can obliterate that orange if I need to, but right now I'm just kind of trying to indicate where the shadows are. And actually I'm gonna definitely need to step back a little bit so I can look back at both. Now, right here, he's got a little bit of light touching his cheek, so I'm not gonna go straight up to that orange line, which is kind of that indication of the fold in his face. I'm just gonna kind of pop around it. So, what I'm looking at is how thick is that light area? That's the area that I'm leaving open. Hope that makes sense. And I'm like, oh, that's in shadow, right? Crazy color blue for the side of his face. Now, um, this side of his face is in darker shadows than obviously this value. This is too light. So this is where I usually would go in with like purple. I don't have purple, so I have to mix it. Red and blue make purple, and this is a nice dark purple, or nice dark blue with a red. Um, now, because this is the set that I did use to do the other portrait, um, some of them broke. Uh, and I do know somebody always asks, uh, should you break your pastels to get to smaller squares? Uh, no, well, I mean, you don't have to. If, you, if this is more comfortable for your hand to hold than a whole stick, absolutely break your pastels. Um, the biggest reason to break your pastels would be if you're traveling and you wanna take as many colors as possible and you have a limited amount of space. Do you have a question? Yes, from YouTube. Could mm -hmm. you have used a charcoal or a pastel pencil for drawing first? Yeah, absolutely. You can use whatever you want. It's graphite works great. Um, just again, this is also one of those things that sometimes I don't even work with a just sketch on there. I'm mainly doing this to kind of expedite the process just so we can get a little further in the class. Um, but for me, if I were to do this without a sketch, I'd be laying down those chunks of color with nothing else there. <laughs> and then I'd lay down the lights and then I'd kind of work back and forth that way. Um, but I definitely need areas over here to get darker. Like you see how right here, it definitely has a darker value than up here on the top of his forehead. So I'm gonna lay down that darker blue and I'm kind of going around this, uh, his, the frame of his glasses right there. But the corner of his eye right here is also really dark. And I'm also, if I do block what I'm drawing, please let me know. I'm gonna try and like not block it as much as possible, but I know sometimes it's a little difficult to do that. Now, uh, also, Fun thing to note is that he does not have pristine eyebrows. Uh, as people tend to get older, uh, their eyebrows tend to get less defined. So uh, that's just something to kind of keep in, in mind. Uh, now, as I'm laying this, uh, this is the deep carmine, as I'm laying that onto that blue, it's definitely appearing more purple, right? Now, I'm mainly doing this so you guys can see how well that mixes on the 
on the paper, but the color of the paper is already a dark purple. I didn't have to do that but I just wanted to kind of show you, uh, especially because we're going to be kind of slightly tweaking this uh, with the kind of more of a naturalistic skin tone. Uh, now here's the other thing that I do, uh, mainly because I know with the pastels that I'm using, these are the, the Mungyo uh, in both of the, the soft and the semi-hard. Uh, these are AP certified non-toxic, so I don't mind that I'm getting it on my hand either. If you are not somebody who wants this, all over your hands, um, wear gloves. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I usually keep on hand, and excuse the reach, are Soho Pastel, or I'm sorry, the Soho Studio Wipes. Uh, these will instantly clean your hands at, and they're great in case you need them. But uh, at this point, I can kind of blend with my finger if I need to, if I need, wanna soften uh, some of those values a little bit and kind of move it up a little bit. But I'm gonna also, step back and I'm gonna need to work on the lighter area, right? So this blue area, I'm not, I'm not too worried. Again, it's just indicating a shadow. Uh, right now I'm going in with the yellow ochre. So uh, with a face, the top area up by the forehead tends to be more yellow. You tend to get a lot more red right here in your nose and cheeks area because your, your blood vessels are actually closer to the skin surface so it just appears redder. And then you tend to get a lot more blue down here in the chin area, just because most of those tend to be shadows. But I do want to lay down the lights here. Now I know that there's a little bit of a forehead wrinkle right here, so I'm gonna go on the top and the bottom so I don't lose that drawing. Can you remind us why you chose that? color that tone of paper? Because I thought it was fun. That's honestly, every time I choose a color paper, I'm like, oh, that's pretty. And that's about it. Um, I've used all different kinds of colors. I've used gray. I've used, I've used sanded paper, uh, which is honestly not my favorite, uh, just because I don't like the feel of it. It's just one of those things. Uh, for me personally, um, I've used a crazy fun magenta color. I've used one that's like the color of the cap here. That was fun. I mean, you can use all kinds of different colors. The, the pack of 12 uh, for the, the paper has 12 different colors, um, it, which also includes like a black as well, which is really, really fun. All right, so his eyebrow right here, it's not a perfect eyebrow. It just looks like a dark kind of almost square, right? So I'm gonna leave a dark square, more or less untouched, right? And it'll appear to be a shadow. All right, now the name of the game with pastels is layering. We're gonna do lots and lots of layering, right? Now, I'm layering while I'm also trying to keep my drawing, so. I'm going to, for right now, because this is all the light areas of his skin tone where the light is hitting, uh, I'm definitely going to use my finger to smudge it and kind of get it into those textures just a little bit, almost like for a base color, if that makes any sense. Same thing with the blue side. And right now, even though it's really light and I need more layers for sure to adjust those colors, uh, you can very clearly see where the light is hitting his face and then where the shadow is. And that's what I'm gonna continue to keep going. The lights are warm, the shadows are cool, but I'm going to try and like push them into a naturalistic color. Uh, now the way to do that usually is to use the opposite colors. So the opposite of blue is orange, which is why I wasn't mad that, that orange is there, right? And if I start smudging that. I don't need a whole lot because it's pretty strong. But I also think, I do like this lighter blue. This is the sky blue because the value up here on the top of his head is lighter. It's not as dark as it is down here. So I wanna maintain that, but it's still the cooler shades, if that makes sense. But over here, 
it's pretty yellow and I, it's hard to tell and I do apologize because you're seeing a print off of a photo through a camera lens. If you were to do this portrait, the best way to do it is to do it in person with a live model. Um, just because your eyes can see the best when it's in real life. Um, I can see this probably better than you can just because I'm in real life and I am looking at a photo, but I can see more of a subtle like color shift than you most likely can, which is a little bit of a frustration and I'm sorry for you watching. Uh, but when it comes to the top of his head, I know it's pretty, pretty on the yellow kind of scale, but like I can see right here where it's just starting to turn into that wrinkle, it gets a little bit more red. Uh, over here, it has a little bit more peach to it. Um, he actually has some sunspots on his head too. So like I can see those, and I don't know if you guys can. Do you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, how many layers do you find that you get on this paper? Honestly, I haven't counted because I always get to the stage of what I need without having to like get frustrated because I haven't gotten to the point like it does I hope this, does that make sense like I've never gotten to a point where I'm like I need more layers and I can't add more layers I hope that makes yeah hope that makes sense it's as many as I need have you tried the lore paper the lore paper um off the top of my head I don't know because I try a lot of art supplies <laughs> uh I am also one of those people that I do better if I see the packaging in person, uh, but off, yeah, that's one of those names that off the top of my head, I'm not a hundred percent sure on. Maybe? Uh, do you think that this paper compares well to the me? Me tints. Yep. <laughs> yep, that one. It actually really does. Uh, the texture is similar, um, and the colors are also similar. Um, I'm not sure as far as comparing the range of colors. I know Me Tints has a lot of colors. Um, I'm not 100% sure as to like how many each one has, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. But it is very, very similar. All right, so. Uh, why do you use your fingers to blend? Because I cannot be, um, bothered with tools. <laughs> uh, for me personally, it takes too much of my brain power to stop what I'm looking at and what I'm kind of trying to accomplish. Stop doing that, go over, grab a tool, and then blend it. Like my fingers, again, this is all AP certified non-toxic. My fingers work. Uh, no, again, if tools work better for you, use tools. Uh, there are all types of blending tools uh, that are out there and it's so great. We even have a pack of um, a variety of blending tools made specifically for pastels. Uh, they even have the, the applicators that look like eyeshadow applicators that are great. They're like the little spongy tips. Um, that they, they work really, really well. Me personally, I have never enjoyed having to stop kind of my thought process to go grab a tool and then blend where like my finger will do just about the same thing. Uh, now I don't always use my finger. Sometimes I actually just blend it on the paper optically and then leave it. All right, so I need to kind of step back a little bit because I'm, I'm noticing that's where his eyebrow is, right? And it gets a little bit more peach, kind of pink tones right here. But then I can see that highlight right there where that wrinkle is. And what I'm looking at specifically is that this space is not the same as this space. This space is too small. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pretty sure you can. So I either need to bring that up or bring that down. And I think it's down. Because that looks a little bit more accurate. Hear it. Right. Right. So I'm um, I'm trying to find those colors in just little bits here and there, and then also maintain my drawing. It's it is a little difficult, but 
Uh, it's definitely one of those things that the more you practice, the better you're gonna get at it. Uh, now, in those kind of wrinkles in his, <laughs> in that, like, right in the forehead, um, right in the, what is that? The bridge of your nose, that's the word. Um, that look uh, that your parents give you that's just like a scowl, like, oh, do you know what you're doing? Like, you know that, like, the grumpy parent face? I feel like this, his kids gave him that. <laughs> I'll have to ask my coworker uh, to ask his mom. But uh, right where it starts turning into those, like, the, the creases on his face, uh, it tends to get real like kind of red. So I want to indicate that. Now, the great thing is that this is also a darker value than what's already there. So it's pushing it back into shadow, um, but it's also kind of warming that tone up a little bit. All right, there's a... Which is the funniest thing for me when I was drawing this his face, uh, and I, I absolutely adore this this paint or this uh, photo, but like he's got such a like the twinkle in his eyes and it's such a kind face and then like that like parent scowl with the wrinkles. <laughs> I don't know if it's from laughing, but I think it's great. Now because that is in shadow, I'm going to pop a little bit of that that dark blue in there, and you see how quickly that pushed it back into space? Uh, that's what I'm doing with that, uh, that color there. And I'm not using a ton. I'm just, just slightly dabbing it on there just to kind of push it around. Uh, now I'm going to start doing some more layers, and now because this is my light, I need it to get warmer. There's a bit more yellow here. And you know, we're gonna go back to that orange too. And then I'm gonna go back in with that, uh, actually let's go in with that uh, kind of peach color. And because I have that peach color down there, I'm gonna blend it, this is what I'm talking about, I'm gonna blend it with the pastel and not my finger. And I'm not pushing down very hard, I'm just kind of scrubbing it into the paper and that's optically mixing them together to give you the subtle variations in color. Now some of those colors are real intense so I usually don't use white until the very very end but I just want to make sure that you guys can really get a, a grasp on how I shift the colors around. Um, I don't want to run out of time before I show you this. There's definitely some light hitting just the top, or the, the edge of his skin there. But I wanna lighten this just right here because it's real bright through there. And again, I can keep it just like that or I can take my finger and just soften it just a touch. The, the thing that I tend to like to do is to play with those edges. I like some that are blended with my just my pastels. I like some that are blended with my fingers. I like hard edges and I like soft edges. I like to give a good variety all over the place just so I can um, push and pull and sharp edges, your eyes are gonna snap to it where uh, softer edges are gonna kind of recede back into the background and you can make and force the viewer's eye to jump around to wherever you want to on the portrait. Now we're gonna go back over here and kind of cool that down, or uh, we're gonna pull that blue back down to a more neutral kind of color by using that yellow ochre. And these color combinations are not set in stone. Everyone's skin tone is so different. So if you have more olivey undertones, you can add some greens in there. If you have, um, like darker skin tones, have purples and reds, and there's all kinds of colors that you can see in there. Now I'm going to actually add a little bit of red, because remember I have that blue down, it's gonna kind of force it to be back into that purple range. But like I don't, I think that was a little too much red. The red's real strong. So 
So every time I lay down a layer, I usually want to st take a step back and then look at what I've done. And then look at that compared to my photo reference and see where I need to go from there. Now I'm going to also uh, point out real quick between the soft pastels and the hard pastels, this is the biggest difference right here, is that kind of peachy color. Uh, the soft pastels tend to be a little bit more yellow, whereas the semi-hard is a little bit more on the pink side. And I will use that here, uh, absolutely. Now I'm gonna switch over to the soft pastels because I honestly don't think I'm gonna get past the forehead. I can give you a really nicely rendered forehead, but I don't think we're gonna get too much beyond that. Maybe some hair. <laughs> but I wanna really make sure that you guys can see uh, how I do this. Now, do we have any questions? Are we all just watching? Apparently, I think we're watching, but. All right, now there's a little bit of a light hitting there. I feel like I'm neglecting Amanda. My back is to you. It's lonely. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, again, I'm just adding just a little extra just to bring that uh, into like a more naturalistic skin tone kind of area. Um, and then if I were to, I think this is a good kind of neutral tone, but I think it's a little on the darker side. Like I think this compared to this is a little too dark, which is all right. So if I want to lighten the value, but I want to keep it in the shadow, I'm going to use a lighter valued cool color. So that's why I'm reaching for that sky blue again. I think I'm going to actually switch back over to that semi-hard pastel because this is the a better color to mix with it because they're both kind of on the same kind of almost level as far as value is concerned. Uh, this is, I would consider this more of like a pink and this is the light blue. So red and blue make more like a purple. So I'm still kind of using that same kind of concept, but I'm just lightening the value. I hope that makes all the sense. Now, I'm gonna adjust his hair real fast, because I think it's fun. So, I'm gonna give him blue hair real fast, <laughs> which I think is great. Now, let me try and remember all the colors I used in his hair. <laughs> uh, there is definitely some blue for those shadow areas because right here where the light's hitting, there's some, some darker shadows just in between those, uh, the, the little hair strands that are there. And then it gets dark down here. Right where his glasses uh, pop into his hair is also pretty dark. So let me darken that. How much pastel can you put on in like each general layer, would you say? You can put down a lot. Like, all right, for instance, and I'm using the semi-hard pastel, so this is a lot harder to lay down uh, a layer with than the soft pastel. Like, that could be a layer, and that is a lot. Like, I could really be scrubbing it into those, uh, the like, the texture of the paper. That is solid coverage. So it, it entirely depends on you. I like to lay down lighter layers and build them up that way. Uh, and the reason why is because I can get a lot of subtle color variation here and there. Whereas if I lay down a ton of it, because if it's like a green tree and I lay down a big chunk of green, it's going to appear like a green tree. It's just gonna not have any of that visual, visual yumminess to it. I hope that makes sense. Oh yeah, I forgot I also broke my brown. Um, so I am going to use a brown. The one thing that I will say in the portrait that I did finish, I used zero black, no black at all. Uh, and the reason why is because that is just something that I started doing in school and then just kind of never got out of the habit. I make a chromatic black using my pastels. Uh, now when I say chromatic black, I mean like it's darkish. It's not exactly black. If I were to put black on there, you'd be like, that is not black. Uh, but to the eye, in comparison to everything else, that's pretty dark, right? Um, but I can also go back and like make it a little bit more blue and then I can kind of 
play around with that. Uh, now the reason why I'm going to lay this down right now is because I want to get that background in. Don't forget about your background. That background is important for sure. The reason why the background is important is because of that edge. If I soften that edge with a hopefully clean finger, I'm gonna grab a Soho wipe. If I soften that edge, I can push it back into space. If I keep it nice and hard, uh, that is a really dark dark, that is a really bright white or brighter area, and the contrast difference between those two is gonna make your eye go straight there. So I can control where your eye goes. You have a question? Yes. Is there a way you can show the AP seal to the camera? Absolutely, so because I can get uh, real close to this one right here. <laughs> I have not been this close to the camera, I think, the entire time I've been on the show. So um, I will show you actually on both of them. And my hands are pretty dirty, but uh, hopefully. Is this on uh, autofocus? Okay. I was like, I can hold this close, but like, let's do. Did I get the right size? Yeah, right side. Hopefully that will focus. There you go. You see right next to that CE right there? Eh, that is the AP seal. <laughs> so it actually says AP on it. Sorry for the dirty hands. <laughs> so if it has the that seal that says AP in it, that is AP certified non-toxic. If it has a CL in it, that means something in here has a hazardous warning and you need to look into that. On our website, you should be able to find every single MSDS sheet for all the different brands. Um, and if you don't find them, I'm because I'm pretty sure we have them, uh, you can always search for exactly what the product is and then just write MSDS sheet, even like just a Google search, and it should absolutely come up. Everything MSDS hazardous kind of a thing. Uh, those are always public knowledge and you should be able to find them pretty easily. Um, sorry, and I'm getting the pastels off my hand so I can blend this. But I will say, you don't want wet hands when you go to blend a pastel because you will pick up a lot more of that pigment than you intend to, right? So I'm not blending it too, too much, but just enough to kind of feather that edge to push it back into space. Yes? Um, do you use fixative during or after completing? That's a great question. Um, no, I do not use fixative with pastels. Now that is my own personal choice. Uh, the reason why I don't use any uh, fixative with any of my pastels is because of uh, that color shift that can happen when you spray uh, any kind of a fixative or anything onto your pastels. Uh, they tend to either get darker or you lose that color intensity um, and that drives me crazy. Now, I will actually um, show you real quick. I do apologize for the reach. Sorry, I'm trying to grab this as quickly as possible without messing it up. Eh. All right, so because I have my finished pastel that is going to the family whose granddad this is. Uh, I wanna give this to him and I wanna make sure that it's protected. I'm going to put it in a crystal seal bag. That's what this is. Uh, it has the little like double-sided sticky that I can, or it has the sticky that I can just peel this off and then seal it. Uh, and I will make sure to even tape it down further just so it's not wiggling around in there as much as possible. Uh, I would do this now, but I want a table to put this on here just because I don't want to like move this around any of the pigments on here as much as possible. But this will allow me to give it to him and he can then transport it in his car or whatever it may be to uh, the local Jerry's Artorama here in Raleigh to the framing department. <laughs> because every Jerry's has a framing department and they will absolutely be able to frame that under glass properly. Now we did have a show for you guys to be watching um, that Amy had done on how to frame a pastel uh, because you don't want it right up against the glass. The pastel dust is going to continue to fall. So you need a little bit of a spacer in there just so the pastel dust can fall 
and not collect on the edge just like it is now here on my easel uh, because even in framed glass, like under glass without any kind of wind or anything, it's still going to fall and then if it collects on that edge of like your mat or anything that's visible, you're gonna see it and it's gonna drive you crazy. <laughs> At least it drives me crazy. But I mean, it's just one of those things that uh, to frame a pastel under glass is what I would recommend. I do not recommend spraying it because you're gonna work so hard to get all these beautiful colors and variations and then you spray it and it's, it loses all of its luster. I guess kind of a thing. So personal choice. Uh, if you do find a spray fixative or something that works really well for you, use it. Absolutely. Question? If the paper has a rougher side and a smoother side, which side should we use for pastel? That is entirely dependent on you. So, um, and I will say with this, and I can probably show it here. Um, I don't believe does this have a rougher? I don't think there's much of a difference as far as the texture is concerned on either side, but either side is the same color, really, is what I'm really gonna get to. Um, as long as each side is the same color, which most colored papers are, uh, then you should be able to use either one. If you want the more textured side, you can use that. Uh, and I will say there are some pastel papers, uh, I think it's like Color Fix. Is that the one that has like a coating on the paper? And it's very specific. You can tell what side is the right one because it, it has a layer of like a gesso kind of surface on the front side and that's a color. And then the back is just pure white and you know which one to use. But with papers like this, that's where dealer's choice and you're the dealer. <laughs> um, now, I want to get back to that hair real quick. I, how are we doing on time? left in the class. Yeah. All right, so this is why I was like, I know I'm not gonna get super far on this. Um, so I'm going to tone down his hair a little bit with the, um, what is this, Van Dyke Brown, I believe is the color. Dark Van Dyke Brown is just the, the single brown that I have in there. Now, you will notice I have not used brown a ton in his, um, in his portrait. The reason why is because as much as a brown is a lovely color, I prefer to make my own neutral colors uh, by mixing opposites on the color wheel. So like the blue and that orange, um, yellow and purple. I don't have purple, so I can mix it, right? Red and blue. Uh, and then the red and the green as well will make a, they all make different types of neutral kind of colors and they all are slightly different. So I approach brown like it is a color, but it is not my dark values of my skin tones. My dark values and my skin tones are those cool colors, and that's how I keep that vibrancy and that that color in there without losing that kind of like beautiful variation. Now I will use this if I need to as well. Like right here, I can kind of pop those uh, forehead wrinkles back in a little bit, uh, and that like little sunspot that he has right there, I can pop that in. Now, if it's a little too dark, I can just take my finger and dab it a little bit and it'll kind of like pop it back a little bit. <laughs> he has a couple over here. I can do the same thing. And this brown is like the perfect color. Also the perfect thing for freckles. Same thing with burnt sienna if you're ever interested because I know how to draw freckles. How to do a lot of self-portraits. <laughs> um, but back to that hair, I definitely need to uh, kind of pull that uh, blue kind of down, but by mixing in this yellow ochre, it's still on the blue side, but it's gonna look a little bit more green, which right here, it honestly does look green. But the yellow ochre, when I mix it with this blue, I wouldn't consider it like a bright yellow. I'm just kind of, cause I don't have that much yellow on there, it's more blue, right? So it's where I'm like, I'm bringing it back down cause his, the hair value is so, so light, but I want to keep it in the cool kind of tones. So, same thing with that peachy color. Now over here, let's see what color I want. I'm trying to see. Um, I'm gonna actually go in with that yellow ochre on that like sunnier kind of areas of his hair. 
and by adding in more of the the yellow ochre and like less of that blue you can see it almost looks like little highlights now right just got just a touch here and there right and then if I want to I can take the white and kind of tone that down as well now because I'm using the white pretty light on top. I'm almost mixing it together, but it's not looking like a pure white because that pure white would be a little too uh, kind of highlighty and it would pop. So I can kind of tone it down a little bit with my finger, uh, but I can also tone that blue down a little bit there. Now if I wanted to, get that, that dark value kind of going back in there of the background, right? I have a plan. If you were to use fine charcoal for the first part mm -hmm. of the drawing, would it be problematic to make multiple color layers on top? Have you run into that issue? The vine charcoal will affect your colors. So keep in mind uh, that that's going to happen. And you then have to think of vine charcoal as a gray or a black. And so if you mix black in with a light blue, you're not going to get a light blue. You're going to get like a gray blue. So just keep it, keep it in mind. Just like the orange is going to affect my colors, like it got pretty green over here because that orange is pretty yellowy and then my blue is uh, a lighter value so it, it has that green kind of tinge to it. Now I'm using just the corner. Uh, this is why I love the squares as well. You can get this with the, the round pastels as well, but I prefer the squares just because I like to use those corners to my advantage, especially when it comes to little hair strands. And just by using that real lightly and just, just kind of lightly pulling it up and over, it looks like he's got little wispy hairs. That's all it takes is just a little, that's why I wanted to get that background in first. But in this one, you can see, because the background right here, I used that blue with the, the brown. And then down here, where it got lighter, I just touched it in with the white. And I mixed it in with my finger and scrubbed it onto the paper. And by doing that, I got like this kind of almost neutrally gray tint that I could very easily do down here. Now, you can see I got lighter down here and darker up here because I wanted that dark contrast against his skin tone. I chose to do that. You can have the exact same color all the way through your portrait. Or if you have like a lighter area over here and you want it to get darker, you can do that. If you have a darker side of his face but you want that difference between the background and you want him to pop off of it, you can lighten it. You don't have to have the same background the entire time, right? You can pop in different colors here and there, right? Super fun. Uh, now also, with his shirt. Plaid. Plaid is difficult. Uh, so if you actually look at what I did here, I indicated plaid. It took a while to layer on top like this, but I did not draw every single little uh, plaid bit of his shirt. Like, that's intense, right? I sort of indicated where it was. So, and the way that I did that is I actually took the pastel and you see how there's a big chunk of like dark stripe there? That's all I did. I did that for the entire shirt. So as you can see right here, it, it kind of up and over the wrinkles. Right, there's that one like right there. And then this one goes kind of that way and like, I followed the shape for the most part. And then it goes back over this way. I'm trying to make sure I get this. Right? So just by doing that, and then I layered in some yellow, I layered in some white, I layered in the brown just to kind of neutralize it a little bit, just like I did with the background, right? That is how I got this crazy shirt to look like plaid. Because I, I don't know what it is, uh, maybe it's just me, but 
from experience, those who wear plaid wear a lot of plaid. And Lloyd here, I, I'm so glad I put in the plaid shirt because I found out that he almost exclusively wears plaid. And if I had drawn him without a plaid shirt, I would have been doing him a disservice, you know? <laughs> so it's one of those things that you don't have to make it super complicated, but if you just indicate here and there, like, you know? And I, I layered white on top of blue and then the yellow for the lights, like, it, you know? It wasn't perfect, and I know it's not perfect, but it's just enough to indicate that it's plaid. Now, I, I don't know how much time we have left, but do we have any additional questions as I'm wrapping it up? Because I feel like, whoop, I had some blue on there. So, uh, to go back to why you use your days. fingers for blending, do you ever have any issue with, like, oil transfer? Uh, no, because I usually am... Um, washer my hands like 20,000 times a day. So like my hands tend to be really, really dry and uh, lacking any kind of like moisture to them in general. Um, but I'm using just the fingertips. And after doing that, I would say maybe two or three times. Like I have a good layer of pastels on my hands. Even after I wipe uh, with a Soho wipe and make sure I dry my hands, like I don't have a whole lot of like oils on my hands that are really going to affect it. I haven't really found that's that big of an issue. Oh, could we switch to glasses? Oh, you want, you want to do the glasses? All right, all right. That's a question that I have. Yes. All right, so with the glasses, what I did was I took the brown, the dark brown, and I drew the frames. This might not be perfect, so please don't please don't judge the glue of this. Because these glasses almost look like they're kind of gold rimmed, right? And I drew drew out the frame entirely. And I did this after I did all of his skin tone. I made sure to keep the drawing of where his glasses landed so where I didn't have to like really guess when I got to that stage. But I did his glasses almost at the very, very end. Uh, and then I took my yellow ochre because I wanted it to look kind of like uh, gold. And um, if I'm using this side of my pastel, you can probably see it's getting kind of worn down. There's no real sharp edges there. This side has sharp edges, so I'll just flip it. Or if I, uh, like I did with my white, I got to the point where like, <laughs> I have no sharp edges on either of them because I've used both sides. Uh, that's when I will break it and get a nice sharp edge of a square. Uh, because this is how I ended up getting that, is that I just indicated where the light landed. Now, if I got, like I just got right there, a little too much of that yellow because I went down too far, I will take my brown, again, sharp edges, and I will just erase it. Ta -da. Uh, and then I will go all the way around just where I can see all the light hitting his glass. Glasses, I should say. Uh, Sometimes it's, and you, this is where you really need to look at your photo reference, right? So I can see it's hitting the top edge of that top one a lot on that corner and then just on the bottom edge here. Right? And then all of this is kind of tends to be in shadow, right? Uh, then I have it over on that top edge of that corner. top edge of the, the center connecting part, whatever, the nose bridge, is that what it's called? Bridge. Bridge. The connecty piece. Definitely on that edge of that corner over here. But like right here where that, um, the ear kind of part uh, connects there, it starts to get into shadow then it has another little bit down at the bottom. Over here. 
Now, as I'm also looking at this, so I, I think of the rim of the glasses as a whole object, right? It has a top, a bottom, an inside, and an outside. So outside of the edge, inside where it's holding that glass, um, and then, it, you know, it's got like, it, it's a fully formed three-dimensional piece. So I am looking to see which side of that kind of form the light is hitting. So it's only on the inside edge. It's not on the outside edge, so I won't draw both. Right, now, take my white, and because I definitely don't have any sharp edges, I'm gonna snap it, which snapping pastels does not take a whole lot of effort. It is pretty easy to break, but you will get a couple of crumblies sometimes. Oh, I must have dropped that one. I really broke it. Sorry, buddy. All right, now I'm gonna take my white and pop in just a couple extra highlights. Just where it's extra, extra bright. Now, because I haven't actually drawn in his eyes, this part is gonna be a little bit not as amazing as it should be but uh, there are also reflections in his glasses. So don't forget, once you actually do his full, uh, the drawing of his eyes, take your pastel, and this is at the very, very end. Soft little reflections. Some of them are a lot harder. So it's just breaking it down into the fact that it is a fully formed, that is a wonky glasses right there, but um, lost the drawing a little bit. Uh, but it's, it is a full three-dimensional shape, and if you treat it like that and pay attention to what side of that shape the light is hitting, where it's hitting, and whether or not there's that reflection, because it does have glass on it, glass is reflective. Uh, sometimes the glasses are gonna reflect different colors, like if you have, uh, a really bright yellow shirt, there might be a bright yellow highlight up there. Uh, you, these are the things that if you look at your reference and pay attention to those subtle color shifts and values, you're really going to get it quite effective uh, when you transfer it over just by doing that. So, do we have any other? I'm sure we are almost out of time. Yeah. Uh, so do we have any other additional questions? I will put up my finished Lloyd as well, so you guys can really see. Finished Lloyd. <laughs> really get that, uh, appreci appreciate the plaid shirt. That definitely took me a while and a lot of frustrations, but you have to draw the plaid. Um, but that is the class, guys. I hope you appreciated that and enjoyed it and learned lots. If you, again, if you have any questions, even if you're watching in the future, make sure to pop them in the uh, chat and the commentary below. I always make sure to kind of check back and see if you guys have any additional questions. But pastels, I mean, it's, it's really uh, quite fun to play around with. And even if you have no concept of color theory and you just want to kind of smudge some pastels down and see what they do, uh, it's a really forgiving kind of medium and you can layer on top of each other quite a lot uh, and shift your colors and get those very, very subtle changes in the tones that are really, really fun. Uh, but just be aware that you're going to get a little messy uh, or wear gloves. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, make sure you do join me next week, of course, uh, because I'm going to be uh, challenged <laughs> by the team. I'm gonna be doing a mystery art box show, which if you know, you know. Uh, but if you don't know, it's essentially where my whole team conspires against me and they put a variety of art supplies in a box that is locked and I'm not allowed to touch it or look at the class, class supply list um, or see what's in there. All I'm allowed to do is open it live on camera and have a sketch on a yes canvas prepared to make art. And I have to use every single thing in that box to create art. So it's going to be fun. 
uh, it's always a blast, and I hope you guys join me next week to, to watch that craziness that's about to unfold. Uh, but uh, also make sure you like and subscribe, specifically subscribe, because uh, we are getting closer and closer to me uh, going off to my residency in France. So if you guys want to make sure you pop in and see when I'm going live, because it's not a set schedule, uh, if you actually uh, you know, hit the notifications, you'll be notified when I do go live from France. Wi-Fi willing. So <laughs> I hope to see you guys later. Bye!